Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology in Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 12, and we're going to be focusing on host responses to pathogens. However, I'm going to split this up into two different sections, because as we go through this video, we're going to be focusing on both the first and the second lines of defense. So the overarching learning um, outcome that you're looking for here is that you can analyze responses to the presence of pathogens by assessing the physical and chemical changes that occur in the host animal's cells and tissues. So this encompasses primarily um, the first and the second lines of defense. And so I'm going to split them up uh, into two sort of sub sections of this particular uh, of the video to address this particular learning outcome. What we want you to do is to be able to define the term immunity to contrast innate and adaptive immunity and then discuss a range of the physical, chemical and biological responses to pathogens. So we're going to try and wrap um, a number of things together here uh, and hopefully by the end of the next couple of videos uh, you'll have a good understanding of how uh, our bodies combat pathogens. So firstly I want to talk about non-specific mechanisms and so non-specific mechanisms are our natural or our innate resistance. They're not ones that we develop over time, they're ones that we're naturally born with and they consist of two primary lines of defense. In the first line we have physical and chemical barriers and this as we're going to see includes things like the skin and the mucous membranes and it will be the focus of this first part of, uh, or well, the first half if you like, of this uh, split video. The second line of defense actually focuses on phagocytosis, which is a particular process carried out by white blood cells, but again it's part of the non-specific approach that we have to the presence of pathogens. And also things like inflammation or fever, both of these are again responses to the presence of infection and they tell us a little bit about what our body is doing in order to try and combat um, invading pathogens. So this will be the first um, half if you like 12a of the video series and we're going to focus in this one on the first line of defense. Now probably the most important thing about the first line of defense is it is pretty much your skin. Your skin is a barrier. However, it's a barrier with several holes and those holes are very important because we either breathe through them, we eat food, we hear, we excrete wastes, we reproduce. There's a whole lot of very good reasons for some of the gaps that we have in our skin. But any one of those um, is an entry point for particular pathogens. So as long as the skin remains clean and unbroken, um, the uh, skin is able to secrete certain substances that actually change the chemical nature of the skin, then we're going to be able to, to a large extent, destroy pathogens. Now there may well be particular bacteria that live on the skin, that live on the surface of our bodies, that may also um, discourage the presence of more dangerous um, microorganisms. The other thing that happens, of course, that you would know about skin is that new, new cells are continually produced beneath while the top layer of the skin is shed. There's a, um, some scary um, statistics about the proportion of dust in your home actually being um, the skin of, or, the, or the dead skin uh, of all of the people who live there. Um, but that's something you can look up um, another time. What's important for us is that that constant replenishing of the outer surface is also casting off any surface pathogens that may be uh, attached to our skin. And keratin, which um, is one of the key components of our skin, uh, is also a water barrier. So we're relatively um, impermeable to water. Now that's not 100% true, um, but it's a pretty good, pretty effective physical barrier. However, as I said, there's holes in it, and some of the holes in it are, uh, I guess, uh, populated by some structures that are also part of that first line of defense and are designed to try and um, stop pathogens before they get too far into our body. So they may be able to make their way in through our nose or through our mouth or um, any of the other orifices, but when they do, they encounter these mucous membranes. 
So mucous membranes are part of the gastrointestinal tract. They're part of the genitourinary, um, so reproductive and urinary systems, uh, and also the respiratory tract. And so we're going to look at a number of different places where each of these different types of membranes exist and what their function is. Primarily, the membranes have two main layers, an outer epithelial or surface layer and an inner connective layer. The epithelial layer is the one that secretes the mucus, which maintains uh, moist surfaces. And so that's going to trap um, particles that maybe make their way in. Um, they're going to get trapped by these mucous membranes, um, sometimes in a sticky substance that may um, then pass them to an area where we may expel them. So uh, we cough, we sneeze, uh, we vomit. Each of these things is, is an action that is uh, an expelling action, something that is pushing something from inside our body um, to the outside. Now, mucous membranes do inhibit microbial entry, but they, are less, uh, they offer less protection than the skin. They're a little bit more of a hospitable environment. Um, so if pathogens do get in, they can sometimes exist for a little while in our mucous membranes. Along with the mucous membranes is the presence of cilia. And cilia are tiny hairs. And these hairs line uh, several of the systems that we mentioned before, including particularly the respiratory system. Um, nose hair, for example, is coated with a mucus filter, uh, with, with mucus that helps to filter dust, pollen, and microbes. And I don't have to discuss exactly the nature of the mucus that collects sometimes in your nose, nor the fact that it can often, as we clear it, uh, be a way of clearing pathogens from, uh, and also foreign bodies from inside our nasal passages. There's also a ciliary escalator, which is basically a way in our respiratory system that uh, moves foreign particles away from our lungs back up towards our mouth and, and that uh, throat where we would cough them out, for example. So these are two really important um, structures that actually help with um, the whole process of filtering uh, the air that we breathe in um, that tries to capture any of those small particles uh, so they don't get into the lungs and potentially do damage. Some of the important chemical barriers uh, also exist in some of these key uh, systems in our body. So we have sebaceous glands that produce oils or sebum um, that also can create an environment that's not um, hospitable or not ideal for pathogens to grow. Um, the pH of the skin is actually slightly acidic. It's below a pH of 7, so that, that acidic pH can also be a bit of a hostile environment for pathogens. If we are perspiring, that perspiration, which is, can also be salty, can help to flush bacteria away, to wash them off the surface of our skin. And if we do swallow any, then we're going to um, have them end up in a stomach which has a very low pH, very strong acid, hydrochloric acid that is secreted by the stomach and that creates a very, very low pH. And that's an environment that, that some pathogens can still survive, but a lot of them will not be able to. In our urine, we have uric acid, and again, each time we urinate, we're passing a, a cleanser, if you like, through um, our urethra, which is, again, um, useful for washing away any pathogens that may be infecting us in that area. And uh, in women, vaginal secretions are another um, secretion, another chemical barrier that helps to uh, remove microbes from that particular region. So there's a number of different types of chemical barriers that are uh, used by our bodies to help protect us against invasion from pathogens. A couple of others just to try and finish off this little section. Uh, we've talked a little bit about mucus and obviously one of the things about mucus is that um, it's not just good as a trap but it's also useful for us to be able to expel it from our bodies. Um, the lacrimal apparatus is basically responsible for the production of tears. So it's going to continue to keep the surface of your eye and your eyes quite hard. So it's a surface that doesn't, isn't easily penetrated, but certainly things can grow on the surface or, or around the, the lids. And so that continual uh, production of tears, uh, at least um, fluid that's going to continue to wash and clean the eye is very, very important. And saliva too. 
because saliva contains enzymes, so that's helpful for starch digestion, for example, but it's also going to help to continue to keep microbes moving um, in our mouths and try and um, eliminate them as much as possible from our teeth and the mucous membranes in our mouth. So you can see there's lots of different body secretions that are um, part of our chemical defense line against pathogens. So in this first section, we've looked primarily at the first line of defense, at the physical barriers that exist to try and stop pathogens. And then if they do uh, get their way through that physical barrier, then we've got mucous membranes with secretion of a number of different types of fluids that are hopefully going to help to capture them and um, stop them from entering uh, further into our bodies. This has been a lot of material to cover and we've only covered two of the three lines of defense. The third line of defense is actually the specific immune response and we'll look, that, look at that uh, in a future video. But there's so much material here that I thought it was easy to break it down into two separate videos. So I hope you'll put these together and be able to get a little flow between the first and the second lines of defense against disease. Thanks for watching.